Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Nadeem and today in this video we are going to explore the critical aspect of construction, the acceptance criteria of concrete as outlined by Indian standard IS 456-2000. Understanding these criteria is crucial for ensuring the quality and safety of your concrete structure. But before we dive into the details, make sure you are subscribed to my channel and have the notification bell on so you never miss out any construction related content. Strength of concrete is commonly considered its most valuable property, although in many practical cases, other characteristics such as durability and permeability may be in fact the more important. However, the strength of concrete is almost invariably a vital element of structural design and is specified for compliance purposes. In construction, acceptance criteria are the set of standards and requirements that concrete must meet to be considered acceptable for use in project. These criteria are outlined by Indian Standard Codes IS 456-2000. So the main question is, why do these criteria matter? They are essential for several reasons. First, they ensure the safety of structure by specifying the minimum strength that concrete must possess. Secondly, they guarantee durability, which is crucial for long-term performance of buildings. Thirdly, they provide the basis of quality control. Acceptance Criteria of Concrete the clause 16 of IS-456 on page number 29 stipulates about the acceptance criteria of concrete. The sub clause 16.1 describes the acceptance criteria from compressive strength point of view and sub clause 16.2 describes the acceptance criteria from fracture strength point of view. As per IS-16.1, the concrete shall be deemed to comply with the strength requirement when both the following conditions are met. The first condition is the mean strength determined from any group of four consecutive test results comply with the appropriate limit in column 2 of table 11 which you will find on page number 30 which states that for M15 grade of concrete the mean of the group of non-overlapping four consecutive test results should be more than equal to characteristic strength of concrete plus 0.825 times the established standard deviation rounded off to nearest 0.5 newton per mm square or characteristic strength of concrete plus 3 newton per mm square whichever is greater. The second condition states that any individual test result should be more than equal to characteristic strength of concrete minus 3 newton per mm square. As per the clause 16.2 when both the following conditions are met, the concrete complies with the specified flexural strength. The mean strength determined from any group of four consecutive test results exceed the specified characteristic strength by at least 0.3 Newton per mm square. And the B specifies the strength determined from any test result is not less than the specified characteristic strength minus 0.3 Newton per mm square. It is often observed that the construction engineer neglects acceptance criteria of the concrete from flexural strength point of view under the argument that flexural strength of the concrete is of no or least important as in the strength design the tensile strength of concrete is neglected. But the flexural strength of concrete decides the serviceability criteria like the deflection of the structure. Hence, if we look into the acceptance criteria from both compressive strength as well as from the flexural strength point of view, it can be concluded with an example. For example, if the grade of concrete is M25, then to satisfy the acceptance criteria, the mean compressive strength of the group of four consecutive test results shall be 29 Newton per mm square, which is 25 plus 4, and the individual cube strength shall not be less than 21 Newton per mm square, 25 minus 4. Also, to satisfy the acceptance criteria, for flexural strength, we have the formula as 0.7 root FCK, where FCK is the characteristic cube compressive strength of concrete and in our case it is 25. So we get 0.7 under root 25 which is equal to 3.5 Newton per mm square. So the mean flexural strength of the group of four consecutive test results shall be 3.8 Newton per mm square that is 3.5 plus 0.3. Also, the strength determined from any test result is not less than the specified characteristic strength less than 0.3 Newton per mm square equals 3.2 Newton per mm square that is 3.5 minus 0.3. Now let us look into another clause of IS 456-2000 that is the clause 15.1.1. The last part of the clause says in all cases the 28 days compressive strength specified in table 2 shall alone be the criteria for acceptance or rejection of concrete. The table 2 of IS 456-2000 stipulates the specified characteristic compressive strength of 150 mm cube at 28 days corresponding to the grade of concrete. Here we have the grade designation and its respective characteristic compressive strength. But this clause contradicts the acceptance criteria of concrete stipulated in the clause 16 of IS 456-2000. 
again if we consider m25 grade of concrete the compressive strength of uh, 25 newton per mm square become the criteria for rejection and acceptance of m25 grade of concrete as per clause 15.1.1 Hence, a clarification is required about the clause which governs whether the clause 16 or clause 15.1.1 as far as acceptance criteria of concrete is concerned. The clause 15.2.2 of ISO 56-2000 stipulates the minimum frequency of sampling for concrete. So here we have a table which has quantity of concrete in meter cube and number of samples required. So for 1 to 5 cubic meter of concrete minimum 1 sample is required and for 6 to 15 cubic meter of concrete minimum 2 samples are required and so on and so forth. It further says that at least one sample shall be taken from each shift. Clause 15.3 of ISO 56-2000 while defining samples says that each sample shall consist of three test specimens. Also Clause 15.4 of ISO 56-2000 states that the test result of samples shall be average of the strength of three specimens and the individual variation should not be more than plus or minus 15% of the average. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your colleagues and make sure you are subscribed for more construction insights align with Indian standards. That's it for today's video. Remember, in the world of construction, knowledge is power and we are here to empower you. Stay informed, stay safe and we'll catch you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.